Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. I'm back and I wanted to welcome you to the first unofficial episode in a series I am dubbing the state of jailbreaking, where we take a macro or a zoomed out look at the state of things in the world of jailbreaking and what we can expect, not just one, but multiple iOS versions into the future. It's kind of just like a general check-in where things are concerned as far as jailbreaking goes. So let's just get into this. layout for this series is going to be pretty basic. We're just going to start with a current state of affairs, kind of just make that shorter, and then we're going to take it one step at a time incrementally from one firmware release to the next. So let's just start at the beginning with the current uncovered jailbreak for up to iOS 13.3. As many of you know by now, this is the first jailbreak for A12 and A13 devices running iOS 13 to 13.3. It does not work on any version beyond that. If you see anywhere a newer version of Uncover, it is fake. It's a scam. Do not trust it. Do not not utilize it, don't follow the steps. It only works for up to iOS 13.3. Now, with that said, the site that I recommend for getting uncovered the jailbreak application installed on your device sans computer means without computer has recently been updated to include a new developer enterprise certificate. So I recommend checking it out, re-downloading it if you have yet to. Link to that as well as everything else mentioned in today's video can be found down below in the description. Of course, because this does utilize developer enterprise certificates, those get revoked from time to time. So I do also also have some videos on how to deal with that and how to still get it installed on your device without a computer and then how to keep it signed using your own Apple ID. So definitely check out those guides, of course, linked below as well. So I definitely had to mention that because that is where we stand currently for the newest devices. Now you might be wondering, well, what about what's next for those devices, A12 and A13? Because we already do have something for A11 and older being check rain. We're going to talk about that in just a second. First though, I wanted to talk about, well, check rain. You can still utilize check rain to jailbreak and you can of course use it for the upcoming iOS 13.5 release. So I'm on the latest 13.5 beta right here. As you can see, this iPhone is in fact running at 13.5 inside of settings general about. And uh, we have check grain. I just recently ran it on the computer. I did allow for untested versions of iOS. It's a very simple box that you just check off and then you follow the regular jailbreak process and you will end up with this right here. So we can go ahead and tap on Cydia followed by install Cydia and you'll see in just a second that it installs Cydia just fine. Cydia functions on iOS 13.5 and we can jailbreak the latest versions of iOS on these older devices because of CheckRain and the all-powerful Checkmate exploit that continues to work across all iOS versions. It's basically impossible for Apple to patch this exploit, which is why it will always work. I can't stress that enough. So many people ask me about it and the answer is always the same. It will always continue to work and the steps are identical. You can follow my guide for that listed down below in the description. I'll have the latest one there and I'll also put out an updated one for iOS 13.5 as well once that drops. Of course though, even if you do have an older device capable of running CheckRain, I do not recommend updating because if you're on 13.3 or lower, you can use Uncover, which is a semi-untethered jailbreak. It means that you don't have to essentially plug your device in and rerun a portion of a jailbreak utility on a computer to re-enable your jailbreak state. You just have to basically do it inside of an application, which is far preferred. Of course, this method is patched in 13.3.1, which is why I do not recommend updating past 13.3, even for older devices. This is all stuff I've said on the channel previously. Now, let's start to talk about what happens next. What happens after CheckRain, after Uncover for 13.3? When can we expect a new jailbreak for newer devices and older devices alike? That's a fantastic question. See, we actually do already know of a very key kernel vulnerability that could lead to an exploit, which could in turn lead to another jailbreak or at least an updated version of Uncover for iOS 13.3.1. Now, beyond 13.3.1, there are no such exploits that are publicly available, or even let's take it 
one step back, vulnerabilities that are publicly disclosed to be able to turn into an exploit to then jailbreak those newer firmwares. I'm talking about 13.4 and 13.4.1. Again, we do not know of any such exploits or vulnerabilities if we're taking it one step back. So the only one that we really know of right now is for iOS 13.3.1. It hasn't even been exploited yet that we really know of. Now, this could potentially change in the future, but keep in mind, it's only one small leap from what Uncover currently supports right now, being iOS 13.3. It's just one small iterative point point update. What I mean by that is 13.3.1 and not something like just a typical point update like 13.4. So because it is such a minor, minor step ahead of what Uncover already supports, and chances are the vast majority of people who are locked out of the Uncover 13.3 jailbreak are already above 13.3.1, it's possible that this is just really, really on the back burner. Remember, these things do take a lot of time for security researchers and developers alike to actually roll this into something that is used in a jailbreak, so it might just not be top priority because it doesn't really affect enough users. That is the unfortunate situation, but that's not to say that that won't change and we won't have new vulnerabilities disclosed to us either by Apple or by a third-party source that could then be exploited and rolled into either Uncover or an all-new jailbreak. That's just something that we're going to have to wait and see, take it one day at a time. Remember, the jailbreak situation is always dynamic. It is never static, which means that things are in flux and change on a regular regular basis, guys. We really can't predict anything unless we actually know some of these more finer details. Then we can start to hone in on potential targeted firmwares and release dates, but it doesn't really look like iOS 13.3.1 is of major importance. Having said that, down below in the description, I will have a link to my jailbreak status checker page for iOS 13.3.1 through 13.5. I recently updated it with some additional information, just letting you guys know that this main page will be the source where you can just visit to get a quick overview of whether or not a jailbreak is released for a new firmware beyond the iOS 13.3 targeted uncovered jailbreak. So essentially, the second a new jailbreak drops for either 13.3.1, 13.4, 13.4.1, or the upcoming iOS 13.5 firmware, it will be reflected on this page. Just really anything beyond uncover for 13.3. So if you're on anything higher than that, definitely bookmark this page because once a jailbreak is released, this red no will change to a green yes. It's really just as simple as that. I've received a number of questions and concerns about that, so I've changed the verbiage there to better reflect what this page actually is and what it's a status checker for. Like I said though, unfortunately things right now are rather bleak for newer devices expecting a jailbreak before iOS 14. Yeah, we're going to talk about iOS 14 in just a second. Reason being is because we don't really have a very attractive publicly disclosed vulnerability that could be exploited and include in the umbrella of the jailbreak the majority of jailbreakers. See, right now we have a small subset of people who are on iOS 13.3.1 and an even smaller subset of those people who are interested in jailbreaking. The majority of people who are interested in jailbreaking who are locked out of of the 13.3 jailbreak are probably on iOS 13.4 or 13.4.1 and uh, we just don't have a publicly disclosed vulnerability for that. Now I would have animated that kind of a graph for you guys but frankly I'm just too lazy so that's kind of my um, just you know low rent representation of why we currently don't have a new jailbreak or any public security research disclosed for anything beyond 13.3 right now, like I said though, that could always change. It could change on a dime. Heck, when Apple releases iOS 13.5 to the general public, chances are potentially they could close a kernel vulnerability that could lead to an exploit in iOS 13.4.1 and lower. That would change everything because the majority of people at that point would potentially be able to jailbreak. So keep an eye out for that. Ding that notification bell if you have yet to. I'll let you guys know anytime we know anything new. Now, as for beyond this, what I'm talking about now is not just 13.5 or 13.4.1, not even 13.6 if that ever comes to fruition, but 
iOS 14 and newer jailbreaks even beyond iOS 14. I recently saw a tweet from Zerodium, which I found rather interesting. For those of you who don't know, Zerodium is essentially like a uh, broker of sorts for exploits. Now, what that means is that they essentially will connect a developer or security researcher who discovers an exploit with a buyer who's interested in utilizing said exploit, potentially for some sketchy things, I guess. But basically, they broker the deal between the two. And uh, they're definitely well known in the world of iOS security research, kind of considered to be a gray market of sorts. But they recently tweeted, quote, we will not be acquiring any new Apple iOS LPE, Safari RCE, or Sandbox Escapes for the next two to three months due to a high number of submissions related to these vectors. Prices for iOS one-click chains, example via Safari, without persistence will likely drop in the near future. Now there is literally so, so much to unpack here, but essentially the main takeaway from this is that they're receiving so many submissions from iOS security researchers that they just have too many vulnerabilities or exploits to process right now to match up with potential buyers. So we have a surplus of these, which potentially could mean that they could be submitted to Apple instead for Apple's bug bounty because Apple's always accepting new vulnerabilities and exploits and they pay a decent amount for them. Granted, third-party sources will always offer a premium because they're in demand. They're in much higher demand than Apple. So Point being, if you can't submit to them, why not submit to Apple and still make some money? It's for a better cause because they're going to be securing the platform for hundreds of millions of users. And then guess what? Once that happens and those vulnerabilities or potentially even exploits are closed in new iOS releases, they become public knowledge. They fall within the public domain and then other security researchers and developers can roll them into a jailbreak. So that's just kind of some wishful thinking, but I mean, it's kind of not. Like, this is definitely within the realm of possibility and it makes the most sense. And yeah, this is potentially just what we can expect for future iOS vulnerabilities and exploits. And as far as iOS 14 is concerned, which of course these exploits and vulnerabilities could also carry over to iOS 14 if the researchers sitting on them decide to wait to submit them, um, and they do ultimately submit them to Apple for closure in new iOS releases. Again, Apple is still planning on holding their annual Worldwide Developers Conference where they showcase the next major iteration of iOS as well as the other operating systems for their other platforms like Mac, Apple TV, Apple Watch, and so on. But uh, that event is slated to take place digitally this year due to world events in June, just like it has been in years past, though instead of developers being able to attend in person, you'll have to attend digitally and we will still receive live streams and keynotes and we're going to have the next version of iOS unveiled and probably also seeded in its first beta stage, if not that day, then shortly thereafter. So iOS development is still continuing continuing at its typical breakneck pace. We're going to get iOS 14 beta very, very soon in just a couple months, probably. I mean, heck, we're already in May right now. And what comes after May? June. So we could be seeing iOS 14 beta one very, very soon. And then it typically doesn't get released until the fall sometime around September. So with all of that in mind, we are quickly approaching iOS 13's EOL or end of life. And the future is looking very bright, even if we just take this tweet into consideration, plus all of the developers on the scene, primarily Hacker Pwn to Own and everyone who has worked on both Uncover and Check Rain. Things are very, very exciting right now. We're receiving new vulnerabilities disclosed to us and patched by Apple at a rather rapid rate faster than we've seen in years past. And of course, this is just reiterated by Zerodium stating that they do have a surplus of vulnerability submissions as well. So super exciting stuff. I do expect, however, that the majority of security research and exploitation, as well as jailbreak development, will kind of be on pause until we receive iOS 14. But I do expect potentially at least one more iOS 13 major jailbreak, something like Uncover, 
Uncover, we're probably going to get an update to Uncover if that happens, if we receive a new vulnerability that it just makes sense to develop an exploit around, like I talked about previously. Of course, all of this is anecdotal, and we're kind of just observing the jailbreak situation as a whole, and kind of just making sense of everything and all of the pieces. I really hope you guys like this video. I hope it helped you out and you learned something if it didn't just come across as rambling that is. But if you liked it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you have yet to, ding the notification bell, of course, and uh, let me know if you like this series. And uh, maybe I'll spice it up and add some extra graphics for the next one if we decide to continue it. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.